do harmonic patterns like uh are you saying like Gartley's and butterflies and stuff like that, Eric? Yeah, um I'm just not smart enough. Um they seem very complicated to me. I think a lot of it seems to be reversal patterns on top of Fibonacci, maybe even a little bit of Elliott wave. Uh you can make harmonics out of them. Seem but I'll tell you it doesn't fit my personality. Now, there's this old story that, um, you, you know, a long time ago, and you know what? It might have been the first time I ever spoke publicly as a, as a professional Forex trader. So it might have been the very, 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 very first Forex Trading Expo. So this is, what, 2004, 2005, maybe? And um, so anyways, I go check out one of the other speakers, and he's doing this thing on a, on a butterfly pattern. Right? So Gartley's, right? So I'm like, oh, wow, this is cool. Because all I know are simple things, right? Like, I'm not, this is the first time I ever spoke publicly, right? So I, I kind of feel like I'm out of my element. So I'm like, well, I'll go, I'll go see these real traders. You know, these, these professionals have been doing it for years. So anyway, so I go into this room to check out one of the other speakers. He's up on this stage, and he's got the butterfly pattern going, and he's like, this has to be 12 degrees, and that has to be 19 degrees of that angle. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, this thing is from another planet, right? I'm like, wow, this is so complicated. And I, all I have are these simple little things like Fibonacci patterns, right? And this guy's going crazy. This has to be 19 degrees. Therefore, this has to be 28 degrees. I'm like, wow, this is super unbelievably complicated. I've never figured this out. Wow, this is fascinating. But, you know, when I look at what he's doing, I would just sell it resistance. I just sell that Fibonacci retracement in a downtrend. You know, I'm like, but he's making it so complicated. It's just crazy. But I would just sell it resistance. I'd just sell it that 50% retracement. But I must, I must be missing something. I must be the amateur, right? And all of a sudden, I, I'm not joking. We get to about 45 or 50 minutes into his presentation, and it's one hour long, and he realizes he's made a mistake on his slide. And he's like, no! And there wasn't enough time for him to go back and fix it. So what he just talked about for 50 minutes actually didn't make any sense. <laughs> and that was that. We just kind of went awkward. And there was no, there was no wrap-up. There was just like, you know, hey, you know, if you email me, I'll just uh, I'll send you the right presentation. And, and, and so... Um, it it was all there, so you asked me, am I, do I not believe in it or something? Look, absolutely 100% chance of it being true or whatever you, whatever you asked. Um, do I believe in it? Look, there's absolutely something to it, for sure. Um, but when I look at those patterns, um, I tend to see other things that work for me that fit my personality better. So like Elliott Wave, it doesn't fit my personality, but I believe it's true. For example, you know, uh, you know, uh, uh, a five-wave pattern with three-wave correction. Oh, yeah, that makes a ton of sense to me. But I'm just doing Fibonacci retracements in, in trend trades. You know, my personality doesn't like too many rules. So things like... Oh well, you know this. This must be a three wave, and if it's not a three wave, it's an A correction of a of a C of a of a five wave. And I'm like, oh my gosh! And if that's not right, you counted your waves wrong, and that you know it just doesn't fit my personality. But in a downtrend like we have now, I'll sell the Fibonacci retracements, right? Well, that basically is Elliott wave too, right? So. Uh, and Gartley patterns, there's a lot in there. I'm not going to calculate like the angle of this predicts the angle of that, which, you know, this does that and that and does this. Uh, I'm sure it works. I'm sure it works for a lot of people. I think the patterns look really pretty on the charts. I think it makes fantastic artwork, too. You know, um, do I typically draw Gartley patterns and, and, and such and bats and butterflies? And, no. But... Do I believe in them? Yeah, absolutely. I just just 
do things a little bit differently. Cool. So, um, yeah, we've actually been talking for almost a half an hour, even though we just started the presentation. So why don't we why don't we jump into it? Um, before I started recording, we were talking about uh, central banking policy and and uh, currency appreciation based on future expectations. And whew, started out hot today. Anyways. My name is Wayne McDonald. I'm the Chief FX Market Strategist for TradersWay.com. Thank you for being a client. We do these sessions every single day, 7.30 in the morning, London lunch, Monday through Thursday here at TradersWay.com, every Friday at FXStreet.com. All right. So we'll go over a little of everything today if we have time, right? Forex, energies, metals, indices, binary options. Should make, uh, it should make your heart happy, hopefully. Today is a Tuesday, the 5th of May, <laughs> Cinco de Mayo, 2015. Let's make some money, eh? Let me remind you that trading and investing is risky, not appropriate for everyone. Past performance does not predict future results. Stay small, stay humble, focus on the long term. Never risk money you cannot afford to lose, eh? All right, so let's just start with this kitty cat. We've been watching it for weeks. Our lower high inside of a range, predict a lower low, which then we got the breakout. We spent days waiting for the retracement. Finally, we got it. We got somewhere between the 3A2 and 618 Fibonacci retracement. It would fall to the downside, which it did off the 3A2. Just this little reversal took almost a week. That predicted it down. At some point, it was going to hit some sort of support and retrace, which it did. In this case, it made a 618. First one is a 382, and the next one's a 618. It, we were talking about harmonics earlier. Um, I kind of look at that as um, I, I, I shouldn't call it a harmonic, but the way that I think of harmonics is different than actual harmonics. But I think of oscillators uh, or oscillation as sound waves. Okay, and if the note was steady beep, all the way through, you'd have the same waves. In this case, you'd have a 3A2, which would predict a lower low, which would make another 3A2, which would make a lower low, which then would get another 3A2, so on and so forth. In this case, the first one's a 3A2, the second pullback is a 618, so it's actually slowing down. Eee! Right? And sometimes I pay attention to that. Totally different from traditional harmonics. But that's one thing um, you know, I pay a little bit of atten uh, uh, attention to. Now, this chart doesn't have any moving averages, right? So that's how you would look at it if you're not using moving averages, right? If it was, if it was steady, we would make 382s and 382s and 382s and 382s. Another way of looking at it is extremely bearish, extremely bearish, extremely bearish, extremely bearish, versus extremely bearish, quite bearish. Okay. Still, we're, we're predicting this 117. Um, this is one of the 1,000 pip trades that we talked about at fxstreet.com. Remember? I made a declaration that one of my goals this year is to get you your first 1,000 pip trade. This was one of the first patterns. So short at 27, target 17, maybe lower. So we're on our way eventually, right? All right. So let's go. Let's start here. Let's go around the world. And this is for our gold bugs. And if I were me, I would be looking for retracements down. Can you see it? Seems like maybe potentially sell zone, but we are we are in the middle of the range. So if you if you were looking for a short somewhere soon, you would be thinking lower low. How does if you were thinking short, how would you feel about the um, the oscillator? Does it confirm or deny your uh, bearish trade plan? Confirm or deny if you're a bear. 
Yeah, it's, it gives you permission. Okay. But because it didn't make a higher high, you would want it to predict a lower low. Okay. Now, on a smaller time frame, do you think it might possibly be doing this? What do you think? So what you would do to test that is drop into a smaller time frame. Let's go in the 60. Oops. There we go. Now, if you're a bull, you're probably going to want to buy sort of in this area. Whoa. So if you're a bear, like I just drew, you want to look for like a double top and a drop. Okay, bulls are going to try to pick it up off of this previous level of support, but also, what are they going to do? They're going to fib this area, aren't they? And this is probably a 618, don't you think? So therefore, if you're a bull, they're going to buy it, aren't they? And if the bears are correct, they're going to sell it again off the weekly central and down back to support. If the bulls win, then it, it's, it's probably going to look like this. Okay. Notice this gray zone we drew a long time ago, predicted short zone. Nice. Any questions? Concerns, comments? It's all good? Nice. Well, congratulations. There was a time in, when that would have been complicated. Cool. You guys are good. So a bear is thinking this, right? And a bull is probably going to think this. So a bull, what, 11.78? Cool. Get wicked smart. Okay. We're still waiting for oil to elevate. Elevation. And boy, the appreciation sure slowed down, eh? Um, looks like we got a turn on the oscillator. Cool. So uh, I want this up here and then maybe look to sell it. Warren says, if gold breaks above 13, then what? Well, we'll talk about it. So that's where we're going. Um, a, a bull would be buying this. This looks really fine if you're a bull. Okay. Kicking off the 4 hour 21, that's a beaut. And it would accelerate things to the upside. I think that's got a pretty reasonable chance. What do you guys think? Check out a 15 minute chart. It's pretty elevated. But the oil market is going to open soon, isn't it? So this might just jump. Oh, <laughs> boy, it looked pretty good earlier, didn't it? 
Look at that 1618 holding. It's exactly, wow, exactly, wow. So next target is 2618A. This kind of area here could be a nice little pullback, whatever. If it's going to go up today, it's going to go up, right? Um, somebody might sell 60 because it's a psych level. Okay, very interesting though, isn't it? I think that'll probably produce some sort of trade today. Boom, boom, boom. 60 is clearly psychological. You know, are you going to scalp that or slingshot it? Scalp off the top down or wait for it to retrace and slingshot through? Uh, oh, the, where's the fib on oil? I'm, I'm actually measuring this little thing. Yeah, so it's not the biggest deal in the world, but that's how I, I have it. So remember, we sold it here, we sold it here, and then it failed. So buying it up, but we sold it here, made a little bit of money, and then it failed. Then this one, you know, took us from a bear to a bull, and we're only bullish up into here, and then we will be bearish again. And this this sell oil here thing, uh, this 382, we drew last year. So here it is, the 5th of May, and we're still waiting to get our, to our sell zone that we drew in September. Oh, is that ready? Now that's planning ahead, isn't it? Yup. Cool. So we're just working our way there. <laughs> our last hope is held. Isn't that pretty? This was uh, Friday. You can see that we have a few different potential buy zones. We had one in here to work for a little bit. We had one in here never set up. And this was our last hope until way down here. And so you can see I have it very clearly drawn in two different colors, not, no less. Um, and the discussion at that time was more people benefit when the stock market goes up than down. Nice little retracement, nice little rebalancing, and potential to the upside. So maybe, maybe that's just coming through, but you can see quite a dramatic change of direction. Right? So just imagine somebody says, wow, look at Apple. I have so much money, you know, so much profit on that, so um, I'm going to cash out now. Apple comes down. 5 or 10%, and then someone says, wow, look how cheap Apple is. I'll buy it back, <laughs> right? And that's just sort of the rebalancing process. Okay, and then the, the other, the lower area is the bigger Alamo. You know, this, we, we're down here, we just, we talked about it just had to hold. Just had to. If it didn't, oh my gosh, the world would hurt for a lot of people. Uh, so anyways, hopefully we're working our way up. The other issue on the upside for the S&P 500 is that's the all-time high. Um, but um, honestly, I think this is going to go up for years. And that's, that's valuable information, I think. I think you're going to hear a lot of doomsdayers and stuff and naysayers and bears, you know, Dr. Doom on TV and stuff. I think this is going to go up for years. This year, next year, the year after, it's all good. Good to know, right?
Boop. And DAX, I think we'll, well, I don't want to spend much time on it, but that's what we predicted. Yeah, a lot going on. Hoping for that to go up. Hoping for that to go up. Looks like this one held. But there's a bigger macro move on the four hour. And so there's just two different reversal patterns here. Maybe a good opportunity for Gartley. <laughs> um, but, you know, you can see we're not far off. Um, the macro move see seems to be the one that is actually working. So imagine it like this. I know there's lots of lines, so let me clarify. The macro move is this. Okay. The other, the other lines had to do with micro moves within the macro move. Okay, so like a down, an up, a down, an up, a down, and an up, well, let's say, on a smaller time frame, it would still produce the macro move. And, and of course, in a smaller time frame, that would be considered like a reversal pattern, right? It's not quite what we got, but it's doing what, what we th were sort of hoping for on a macro level, um, just based on Fibonacci. And you can see this is a 382. So it's not, you know, not luck per se. The DAX is holding at the 382 of the uh, wave or of the, or of the move since uh, the discussion of quantitative easing. All right. So if you missed quantitative easing in Europe, well, you just got a 40% retracement. Luis asks, uh, on the London Open, is it fair to, uh, to think it's a good time to enter a trade in any instrument? You know, by and large, um, some things move a little bit better than others, and depending on the situation scenario, um, you know, sure. So just to see, to make sure you understand the guesswork here, Guessing that this 382 is going to hold was part of the plan. Then a significant um, retracement, more than 786 from here to here, right? Which would then predict the, uh, a 1, 2, 3 reversal pattern, which would get us to about here, which is now 50% of this and this. And that would take us up, which would only confirm the big macro move of just down to the 382. And up to the 1618. Okay? Lots of nice little things going on in there. I know it looks messy, but it should be clear as mud. All right? So, yeah. Uh, we already did Kitty Cat. Fine. How about Yen Yen? Starting to look nice, isn't it? Okay, here's the range. Low. High, right? Low, high, low, low, higher high. Hammock. I think we talked about this last week, didn't we? When I say hammock, what do you do? <laughs> battle stations, battle stations. Okay. Predicts a retracement. Okay. Somewhere between what? The 3A2 and 618. Up. Great. Down. Retracement to the roll reversal. So somewhere around here that used to be resistant probably will be support in the future. Okay. Which would, okay. And then, of course, you can use moving averages and stuff. And it seems to me that it's now making a new higher high, which eventually would be hammock. Right? It's going to go up, hit some sort of resistance. Right? 120, 50, let's say. Then what's it going to do? It's going to come back, retest this area, and then that will make it a higher high.
Any questions? So you can see now on a on a higher time frame, the range is a little different. The range is d d d d the basic right basically this whole thing is in a range and then we're kind of entering in even more dangerous territory right this area here is even more dangerous now a breakout above that whew, long and gone right And don't be shocked, okay, don't be shocked if it does come all the way back down. But if you're a bull, you keep buying down in here. That's it. Try it again. Okay. What did I teach you in other things like... Uh, like, do you remember when the uh, USD CAD moved sideways for months? What did we do? Let it break. Sell the pullback. Or let it break. Buy the pullback. Do I care about the Dixie? Sure, I care about the Dixie. Um, I see it at a roll reversal area, so if it was going to fall, it's going to fall like right now. That's all. Deep. Uh, as far as trend lines, uh, they're much more subjective, so your trend line might not be on my chart, so therefore, it's, you know. We need, we need things that everyone can see. But Anyway, so you can see we have a red zone, which means sell, right, off of previous resistance. Not everybody has this wedged. But if you're still playing the wedge, then maybe it comes down, and then what? That's the pig yen. But remember, let me just back out a little bit. That's where we are, and, and that's why I have it lit up like a Christmas tree. And the next one's going to be like up in here. Okay. So if you're still trading this up, um, I think it's very clear that that's resistance. And then if you're a bull, what are you going to do? You're going to measure from the low to the high to the, what, 3A2. 50%, 618, and boom, all right, <clears throat> something like that, what do you think? Any thoughts, questions, concerns, comments? Yeah, so uh, this is pre-New York, so it's either going to move now or it'll, be, it'll move tomorrow pre-London. 
Okay. Everybody good? Everybody happy? Number five alive? <clears throat> so there's quite a few people in the room that are fair new to my style of trading, but there's also some people that have known me for many, many, many years. Uh, for you old timers, um, has my is my trading like has it tra changed dramatically uh, over the years, or has it stayed relatively the same? Like, is this exactly what you got five years ago? Can anybody confirm that? Or is this sort of my new, like my new system of the of the month? The same, huh? Well, how long have you guys known me? When was the first time? Uh, we ever sort of, you know, traded together. Steve, 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 who? Two thousand eight, since March. Two thousand eight. Which Steve is it? Denise, last summer, yeah. All right, Stevie B, huh? Cool. Two thousand seven, so. Marina said, "Yeah, but isn't it um, isn't it nice to know that there's consistency?" Rana Pana two thousand ten, huh? Coming up on four years, Rana. Yeah, um, I think that's cool, isn't it? That there isn't something sort of new and unique. Um, you know, um, this is just trading and that I, I I think what works for me you know we were talking about what fits my personality what doesn't fit my personality um, simple is good I know sometimes you look at my charts and it doesn't look simple but um, but I suppose it depends on how long like if you were here when we drew all these little analyses um, most of these are guesses of what will happen in the future, and it doesn't look like a guess now because it, it's happened. Like you can see, I was basically wrong here, but I was right here. Um, so if you were there, it still makes sense, and you're you're only looking at it from the point of view of adding new information and you you know so on and so forth. But uh, I think what works best is the basics, right? Simple, logical. Keep it simple. So I don't want to be like the guy that talks for 50 minutes and then realizes he's made a mistake um, and it, it can't be fixed. Just too much time. Well, you know, yeah. So like I say, um, you know, when I was a venture capitalist, um, we would invest in the products that not only fulfilled a, a service and in, in Provided a solution to an expensive pain to to some sort of audience, but um, you know your mouse trap shouldn't have two hundred moving parts. Even if it killed the mouse a hundred times in a row, a hundred percent of the time, uh, the trap itself could break and be difficult to manufacture. Therefore, it would be expensive to sell. And no one wants to pen, spend a thousand dollars on a mouse trap. So the one dollar mouse trap is always going to win, right? So um, simple, 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 simple. You don't want too many moving parts because moving parts break. So if you were to master something, how about that? Uh, let's talk about this. Um, what order would you master things in? Um, I would study, first of all, um, how about price action? Two, support and resistance. 
Uh, you probably can't even see that, right? We should probably do this on a cleaner chart. <laughs> if I have one. I guess we could do it. Uh, I find the whiteboard is really slow, but we'll try it. All right, so one price action. Two. So support and resistance. Is it re resistance or ants? No, ants looks better, right? Hmm. Now I'm thinking what? Moving averages, maybe pivot points, maybe oscillators. Hmm, maybe. I would say those are the first two I'd start with. Right? Um, and then sort of like um, next steps, I'll, I'll drop it for three. Um, and this would be sort of a, a tie, right? Um, moving averages. Oh, what does tab do? I don't know what tab does. All right. Uh, moving averages, uh, pivot points, as I, and um, you know, I, I'd say even that would be that, and then next one would be oscillators. As technical analysis, oh. Um, and um, you know what? What else would be interesting in there? Really, I should, I'm going to stick to this. I'd say this would be the first step. You know, and I'm going to put um, fractal. And, and what I mean by that is multiple time frames. Okay. Make that two, and then make this sort of three as far as technical analysis, right? So that's kind of how I would, without much thought, that's how I'd probably order things. Now, the interesting thing is, like, price action um, fits along with, you know, Fibonacci. You can throw that in there, price action and fibs. That's fine. Uh, support and resistance. Um, I use two different support and resistance. Uh, for example, um, uh, support and resistance. Oh, interesting. I can't use my drawing tools over they're drawing tools. Okay, well, let's try this. So, like, so this support and resistance here, um, that has to do with the market. No, sorry. I, no, it's price. Sorry. This has to do with price. This is things like double and triple tops, right? Just price coming up over and over and over again. Generally, I look at that as a horizontal because that's just what I like. But this could also be channel support and resistance. And then pivot points down here, there it's also support and resistance. But in this case, for the market. Okay? And the reason I'm, I discern that is because what you're looking at is, is, let's say, a daily pivot point is yesterday's high, yesterday's low, yesterday's close. So you get your average that's weighted with market sentiment, and now you have a new pivot point. And that's just based on what happened yesterday. So what was the market like yesterday? Well, that's going to impact things today, right? Where that doesn't necessarily have to do with two or three or five different touches of price. 
it just is the high, low, and close divided by three. So it's more market-based, right? And ideally, all these things overlap. So you're, let's say, at a triple top that just happens to be a reversal pivot and right, and you have a moving average crossover to the downside when price is way overbought. Well, now you got like, um, you know, you got probably everything going on here, right? So again, I would put FIBS with price action because another way of looking at price action, um, and let me see if it'll let me change the color, image, text, oh, color, here it is. Let's do it this way. Fine. So price action is what? Okay, let's say um, here's a high, there's a low, there's a high, there's a low, there's a high. Okay. Do you see Fibonacci entries here? Right? The answer is yes. Right? You would measure the low to the high. This is probably a 618. Then the high to the low, probably a 3A2, so on and so forth. Right? But it's also price action. Okay? So this, this old high, this old resistance is likely to be support in the future. And so, to me, they're one in the same. Okay? To me, they're one in the same. And that's why I look at fractal geometry, because on a higher time frame now, that might just simply be um, a move up. Okay? And then we're going to have to have it come down like this, make its retracement, and then up. So there, so now you got your Elliott wave because on a smaller time frame, you you know on this orange line you'd expect it to come down a little bit. To an Elliott wave technician, that's a three wave correction, and then and then it's going to move up again. Meanwhile, it's Fibonacci. Meanwhile, it's um, fractal geometry. Meanwhile, it's probably also old support and resistance, and then you're going to get rolling uh, rolling over price action stuff, which would be, you know, candlestick pattern ideas, price action ideas, um, oscillators. You know, it'd probably be oversold in there. Just you know, all of a sudden you just get a confluence of things going on here. So that's why, like when somebody says, you know, do I believe? In Gartley's, well, yeah, I don't use them, but I know they're probably going to work because a lot of the times it's the same thing, just described differently. So whether you want to call it a Gartley and someone else wants to call it something else, just a uh, just a reversal pattern on a fib retracement, then then so be it, right? So gold is Oscar Mike here. Look at that, gold on the open, starting to move nicely. Gold, the gold market opened one minute ago. See where it goes next. Any requests? What should we cover now? Oh, uh, any difference between Fibs and Murray? Uh, I, I, yeah, you know, I don't. I just use. Just basic standard stuff. I know there's all kinds of takes on, on pivots. Um, you know, I'm old school enough where I, when I started trading pivots, I think there were only pivots. <laughs> I don't believe there's even variations of them, but, but then again, maybe there were. Don't really know. Oh yeah, euro. Euro pound. I generally don't trade euro pound, so I'm not going to cover that. I trade euro or pound, but not euro and pound. All right. So uh, yeah. Um, so I like if I'm a bear, 
what I look for is selling at resistance. Okay, this previous high should be a buy zone. We went pretty significantly below that and touched this area, which means it made almost 100% retracement. So if I'm a bear now, one of the things I might be looking for is a fib down. If I'm a bear. Now, I still need some confirmation, but uh, one thing that I could do is this. So this is what we drew, when was this? Last week? How are we doing so far? The prediction was, oh, right, exactly where we are. Look at this, let's try to line this up. Look at that, I hit it to the pip. I'm one pip off. Sorry, I must have been tired. Isn't that neat, guys? Okay, if a bull is going to want to buy it sort of in here, right? So we got all kinds of things going on. Let's clean up our charts a little bit. All of this has sort of worked its way out. That's the one that failed, which then predicts up to the next level. Um, so what do you want to do next? I think somebody's going to want to buy this again. I know you probably don't want me to say it, but um, there's a pretty reasonable chance of uh, some up. What do you think of that, Eric? And then let me address this. Uh, Kevin says a long-term sell. Well, I'll tell you what. I, I don't disagree with that, but it's a guess right now. Because there's no lower low. Okay? So if you held on to this, and the target is parity. I know what you're thinking. I don't disagree with you. But what is is there reasonable is there a reasonable probability that price also does this? Yeah. Um, all right, so therefore, if you were to write a textbook now, you were given all creative license. Kevin, how would you s draw the setup so that it does go to parity? So I want you to think about that, and I'll, I'll, I'll draw mine while you think about yours, okay? Okay, and I would hold short here forever, so to speak. That's where I'd hold for parity. This one, you're trying to be smarter than everybody. This one, you, even a blind man can see. Okay.
Okay, and once that's there, game on. Everything's confirmed. Okay, to draw it again so it's a little easier to see with more time. Down, up, down, up, short. And that's the one I, I hang on to. So this, where we, where we are now, if you're hanging on to it, it's a pure guess and, and you're gambling. Two, this one here is confirmed double top. You're being aggressive. Three, break out of a range. Because, you know, this could... This could triple top, right? This could go down to the bottom and then back up to the top. I mean, we don't know when it breaks, but eventually it breaks, pull back, and now you sell a lower low, lower high, one, two, three reversal, kicking off of old support, which becomes resistance after a double top in the direction of your prevailing trend. <sighs> yeah. It feels good. Well, got about 30 seconds to the snooze. Trade balance. I think it's kitty cat uh, balance too, isn't it? State in just a few seconds. U.S. trade balance minus fifty-one point four billion dollars, wider than the minus forty-one point seven billion expected. Prior advised slightly wider, wider to minus thirty-five point nine billion. Canada at minus three billion versus the minus zero point eight billion expected. Yeah. Trade gap with China at thirty one point two billion. Still don't have any Canada trade data that is a record minus three billion. So I would say uh, decent numbers for uh, the United States, not so good for Canada. So, for example, uh, the U.S. trade balance is minus 51 billion. Sounds bad, right? But that means we're buying Toyotas and Hondas and Bart Simpson t-shirts. And that's actually a good thing, right? We're buying 72-inch LED TVs from Walmart for $700. <laughs> it's amazing. I was looking at a 70-inch 4K TV, and it's like less than two grand. I'm like, holy crap. It's just amazing how, thing, how cheap things are. Just absolutely amazing. Just dog cheap. Just a year ago, that would have been twenty thousand dollars. Now you can pick it up for eighteen hundred and ninety-nine dollars. So anyway, so we're buying our cheap garbage um, because that wasn't a Samsung TV, that wasn't an LG TV, it wasn't a Sony TV, um, but it was cheap. Um, so anyways, uh, we're buying cheap crap from foreign countries, and and that's good. So our trade balance is negative. Okay, shield spread alert. Big move here. Uh, USDN coming down nicely off of uh, 2050. Cool, man. And USD CAD is all over the place, complete mess.
if someone bought the uh, the dip, it didn't quite get to seventy eight fifty. But if you're trading USD uh, Aussie dollar versus US dollar, there was sort of a dip you could have bought, but it probably didn't dip quite far enough for you. I'm just kind of looking around. What else? Um, yeah, the uh, dollar index is starting to move down. Like I said earlier, we're in a spot where if it was going to fall, it needed to fall right now. Well, it's falling. Here, up four ticks and yield at 2.13 percent. Wow, 2.13 towards the highs of the day. 1149, a high one, 1152. Crude futures hitting a fresh high, 6041 now on the WTI contract, up two and a half percent. Remember, guys, just pick your spot. We're at uh, 111, right? We're at 111.50. If you're a bear, prepare to sell it. What you talking about, Willis? Prepare, guys. Don't get all freaked out and chasing things. Uh, if you're going to scalp the news on the one-minute chart, you still would want to long it off of uh, off of this. Range. And if you're a bear on, let's say, the short to medium term on USD, um, you basically got your double top. You're at the midpoint psych level. You know, if you want to do it, have a plan, man. See if I can clean this up. <clears throat> you can see here, one of the things that I do is I look at yesterday's low, yesterday's high, and then I mark the 3A2 and 618. You can see the 3 and the 50%. There's three lines there, right? And that's my sell zone. You guys do that too? So you can see yesterday's high, yesterday's low. There's the low plus 3A2, right? So obviously that's the 3A2 Fibonacci retracement. So what I'm looking at here is sell, sell, sell. Neat, huh? Okay, and for dollars in five month gold. How does it look, guys? Is there a need to freak out? Nice, though, huh? I'm trying to use this one to show you how to stay calm and focused. We've just been working this thing for weeks now. Just moving along, isn't it? White says, could you do pound Aussie? Uh, I mean, yeah. Just keep in mind the fundamentals might have changed on the Aussie, so you need to do your homework. Seems like you're probably better off pound dollar than, than pound Aussie. Uh, nice head and shoulders. Yeah, you know, uh, I wouldn't call it that, but that's a big, you know, that's a big debate. Uh, I wouldn't call it that. But uh, um, but one of the things I I always look at, and we we've talked about this on other pairs, and and even today I believe we've done it. Um, if you're a bull, 
um, you would buy ideally somewhere between the 3A2 and 618 Fibonacci retracement. You would use this old high, right? Also as support, right? You should have longed there if you were a bull. If the bulls are worried or wimping out, um, then it's going to come down either 786 or even worse to 100, right? So as soon as you get past that 618, if you are now a bear, you can say, aha, there's weakness in the bulls. The, bull, the bulls are weak. And you smell blood and you set up this. And that's where I yell hammock, right? The pullback was too big. And there's a much there's a high probability of reversal, and that's all that I see here going on. Now I think what you would what you're saying is you're counting this as a shoulder to the left, and here's a shoulder to the right, and and then you you know you get you get some interesting necklines, right? So you're kind of playing it kind of like that. Um, yeah, okay, but I wouldn't do it that way. So, like, if you're going to do the head and shoulders, then you got to do things like measure the distance from the neckline to here. And in that case, that's the actual fib. And therefore, you know, you're going to expect, a, I mean, it, it's all kind of the same thing. So, like I said, whatever flavor you like, um, so be it. It's all good. But the interesting thing is, you know, we've planned this out five weeks ago, six weeks ago kind of thing. I mean, it's just fish are jumping in the canoe. I'm glad we're out fishing. Uh, USD yen is now what twenty twenty one twenty twenty cool well just plan it out pay attention do it do what you think is right uh, Aussie dollar back at eighty sorry seventy nine my bad seventy nine uh, I I kind of if I was going to end the day with something um, you know, I, I'd probably pick uh, pig dog. So currently the dollar's weak, but we've been bullish on the British pound since the 15th of, uh, sorry, actually the 13th of um, April. And we're expecting a roll reversal off of this area. Whoa. Right? Do you guys remember we were way up here? Do you guys remember this? And you can see I drew the blue lines for the oscillator to come down. And that price would fall and then head back up. Anybody remember that? We drew out that oscillator in advance. We were stuck at the top here. You can see we have this as lower low, lower high. Do you see the blue triangle? I believe that was non-farm payrolls. And we did the hammock drill. Can anybody confirm that? Not non-farm payroll, sorry. FX Street. We're at FX Street. And I was teaching people... Hammock! And someone's like, what does hammock mean? So I took people through that. And that we would trade it down through the oscillator. So anyways, so short at 154. Here we are at 152. Only 200 pips. I know, must have been tired. But it's something. And then now we're sort of in this bottom of the oscillation. Near support. And that we should probably be thinking about taking it back north. Again, 10,000 million, as my kids would say. 
10,100 lines. Uh, but they all made sense at the moment <laughs> we drew them. <laughs> hey, you, you had to be there, right? But uh, so lots of lots of things going on here. But nonetheless, uh, what what we're looking for in Trend Trader is this. See so back to the apex, to the new high, to the old resistance. Follow the channel up. Because remember, we had a down channel. We traded the reversal into the apex to the higher high, higher low, complete the cycle, and potential to the upside. And of course, if you like that, maybe, just maybe, the pound yen is even better. Because maybe you're not long term bearish on the Japanese yen. I mean, on the U.S. dollar, and might would might prefer to be bearish on the Japanese yen longer term, right? And so maybe you set it up in here. Okay. Did anybody catch this on the London Open? Oh, say can you? Oh, I guess it couldn't be. I should sing something different. God save our gracious Queen. Long live our noble Queen. God save the Queen. Uh, that would put you long on this sucker right about here. Splendid, victorious, or if you missed it, happy and glorious. Born to reign over us, God save the queen. All right, so yeah, that one worked out real nice. Again, strong a little bit, right, Daniel? Yen strong a little bit for several hours, and then boom! Hoo ha! Nice. So this is this is the London Open, as you can probably see. Do 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 do, and you can see some choppiness right in here. Buh, 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 buh. But everything should be good. So you know, um, what 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 would I do if I were me? You know. I want to buy an appreciation asset at a discount. Does that sound reasonable to you? Who wants to buy an appreciation an appreciating asset at a discount? Yeah. How many people want to buy a de depreciation asset at a discount? No, I don't like to sell low. Or I don't like to buy low uh, that way. Okay, I want ideally a trend. Okay, because if you're buying something that's falling and you buy it at support just because it's at support in a, in a falling market, so there's your depreciating market, then what you're doing is you're gambling. And your bet now is that the bet is that it's going to work it's going to go high what i would rather you do is the other way is um you know find yourself an appreciating market and buy it at a discount buy it cheap on the way up don't buy it cheap on the way down that's what i'm looking for so, you know, it's quite late in the day, um, um, so I think I better go, but um, thanks for hanging with me. I really, uh, you know, I really value our time together, and I, I, hope, it, uh, I hope it's helpful.
I'm going to upload this video to YouTube. Uh, could you give it a like, leave a comment, even if it's just to say thanks? Appreciate it. So again, thank you for being a, tra uh, a client of Trader's Way. I'll see you tomorrow. Peace on earth. May the pips be with you. May your profits be above average. Again, leave a like and a comment on youtube.com slash c slash traders way. I'll send you there now. Hang on.